Now what I'm going to do is show you how you can use another basic photo retouching tool in Photoshop um, to um, remove areas rather than isolated blemishes like we might use the, the clone stamp tool for. I'm going to be using the patch tool which allows us to select a particular area and replace it with another area. So for example what I could do um, with the patch tool is select um, an area just below the eyes here. Um, you'll notice that there are a couple of um, small wrinkles just here. I'm going to select them with the patch tool. Um, what happens is when I've got the um, image selected, if I drag this around, what you'll notice is that I can find a, a, a sort of wrinkle-free patch of skin and let go. And what that does is um, patches that area. So it sort of um, merges the two areas together. I'm going to press Command D to deselect that area and what you'll notice has happened here is that I've removed some of the um, wrinkles from beneath the eye using the patch tool. To give you a rather more extreme example um, what I could do is select um, an eye like this and go ahead and patch it with an area of forehead like that. Um, not quite the effect we're um, going for but it does demonstrate how this tool works. I'm going to hold down Command Z to undo and Command D to deselect. The next tool that I'm going to show you is called the um, Spot Healing Brush Tool and you can find it over in the Layers palette um, just over here and what I'm going to do is select that tool uh, and use it to remove um, some different um, spots and um, blemishes. I'm going to grab the Zoom tool and I'm just going to zoom into this area of forehead just over here. And what you'll notice is there's a few freckles around here. What I'm going to do is grab the um, tool from the Layers palette, the Spot Healing Brush tool, move over here, increase the size of the brush a little bit using the square brackets, and I'm just going to click on the various blemishes like that. And what you'll notice is that um, these spots are then immediately removed. And this is a great way if you've got a few pimples to get rid of them and that sort of thing. It's a really, really simple way and an alternative to using the clone stamp tool. One particular technique um, you may have heard talked about in terms of uh, beauty magazines um, and the fashion industry is airbrushing. Now I'm going to show you how you can use airbrushing to um, create a nice sort of feathered effect um, on the skin um, of your photograph. To achieve this, what I'm going to do is um, copy the layer that we've created here by dragging it to the Create a New Layer icon. I'm going to rename this top layer Airbrush, just like that. Now the first thing I'm going to do with this um, newly created image is I'm going to go to the Filter menu Blur, and I'm going to go to Surface Blur. Now you'll notice that this has um, a very, very overpowering effect on the photograph. I'm going to change the radius um, perhaps to something a little bit lower than that. Maybe about 50. That looks reasonably good. Um, and I'm going to hit OK. The settings that you use will depend on the resolution of your photograph. And the reason we're applying a surface blur to the whole photograph is because what we're going to do is um, airbrush in some of this. And um, by blurring the whole photo, rather than just airbrushing a solid color, we're going to be revealing colors that are consistent with the skin tones underneath. Now, what we're going to do now that we've apply applied this surface blur to the whole image is I'm going to go to the layer menu and I'm going to go to Layer Mask. What I'm going to do here is hide all. Now the way a layer mask works is by hiding areas that are black, showing areas that are white, and shades of grey will be somewhere in between. Now if I look over here in the Layers palette, you'll notice that um, the layer mask is entirely black, which means I've hidden everything in this layer. What we're going to do is grab the Brush tool by pressing B on our keyboard, 
and I'm going to press the square bracket tools until I get a slightly larger brush. Now you'll notice that um, I have a square brush here. Uh, I'm just going to change that to a soft edged round brush, a little bit like this one. It's important to have the soft edge because what we're trying to do here is um, just um, sort of smooth in some of this um, airbrushed um, skin. So what I'm going to do is um, over here in the toolbar, you'll notice that the foreground color is set to black. So if I start painting now, what's going to happen is that uh, I'll just be painting black on a black mask. So you won't see any change in the image. What I have to do is flip the foreground and background colors around. Now I can do this in a couple of ways. First of all, I can click uh, this button here, which you'll notice has just changed the foreground color to white or I can press X on my keyboard to achieve that and that's a really cool way of just flipping the background and foreground colors really quickly. So now that my foreground color is white if I go over here to the canvas um, and just press a couple of times what you'll notice is that uh, we start to see some of the um, smoothed, uh, smooth airbrushed image coming through here. Now in the option bar the opacity um, of my brush is set to 100%. Now, I don't want the full airbrushed layer to be coming through. What I'd like to do is actually um, be a little bit more subtle than that because the airbrushing technique that we used is a little bit overpowering. I'm going to set the opacity to about 50%, so I have to click a couple of times before uh, this comes through. And what I'm going to do is just paint on the mask, just like this, and slowly reveal. Um, some of the airbrushed image over the top of this. And once again, as I move around my image, I can use the square bracket tools to make my brush bigger and smaller. Um, and I don't want to airbrush over um, the lips, I don't want to airbrush over the eyes. And that's why um, I'm changing the size of the brush and just moving around kind of um, carefully and selectively. Now, um, I've done a little bit of basic airbrushing there. I might just do a little bit more work on the cheek over here, just clicking a couple of times. Now, the differences um, can really quite profoundly be seen when I go over to the Layers palette and I click on the um, Layer Visibility button here, the little eye, and I can turn this top layer, the airbrush layer, off. And what you'll notice is that when I turn it off, you can see um, the freckles and the, the variation in the skin that's underneath. And when I turn it on, you see the airbrushed image. Now, what does this look like? So if we were to turn off the background layer and the layer that we've been manipulating, this is actually what the layer looks like. So what you can see is that I've selectively uh, shown some areas of this um, very flat, um, very glossy surface blur. Now before I go any further, um, what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key over here in the layers palette and select my uh, the image that I've been working with and the airbrush layer. By right clicking on um, these layers, I'm going to go to convert to smart object. And this is really cool. What it does is takes those two layers and makes them into a smart object. Now if I want to edit the airbrush layer again, all I need to do is double click on the icon in the layers palette and hit OK. And in a separate window you can now see that I have the airbrush and the, um, the background image opened up. If I make any changes to those, all I need to do is close that image and save the changes to return to my document. Now the reason I've done that is because I'm now going to start making some other changes to this and um, it's going to be a little bit neater and a little bit cleaner if I combine those two airbrushed layers like that.